So this is the Tamograph site survey software. We're going to jump right in and uh, create a new capture, new project. Here we are. There we go. And this is just going to be a quick one I did of my house. And I'm just going to leave it in the default install location. And next. Now this is where you're going to select uh, what kind of environment you're in and it goes ahead and guesses some default presets as soon as you choose that type. So here we're in the states, I'm going to keep it feet and next. And now I'm going to load an image. This is one I made in Visio, just really quick and dirty so it's not exactly to scale. So whenever I do the survey it's not going to be 100% precise but uh, should be close enough government work next finish it's that fast now what I have to do is actually set the scale on this and it basically tells the software um, how far apart everything is and so I'm just gonna say that this doorway is three feet apart so click and drag set it to three and apply pretty simple now we're gonna go into edit mode so we need to open the edit tools over here <laughs> and this gives us our options so uh, we're gonna start with the exterior walls you see there's a myriad of different material types down here from uh, concrete to brick to interior walls and it's easy as choosing your material type and just a few clicks here to here to here to here and then I'm gonna skip ahead just so you don't have to watch all of this and I've already made everything now I'm just adding the doors now we're gonna come over here and choose an access point type to add I don't actually have a dual band in here I just have a 2-4 in router and it's roughly in this position it's kind of behind the TV so I'm just gonna stick it right there easy enough now we're gonna exit edit mode and now we can start interacting. This is where the predictive nature of the survey actually comes into play. So it's going to guess based on the wall types and materials I choose uh, what the signal strengths are going to look like in the different areas. So you can see the constriction of rings move out, um, gives you different readings and you can kind of match those up to the little key down at the bottom. Uh, but I like to, to hover over so you can get a little bit more accurate representation of what it thinks the signal strength will actually look like. Interesting thing is, if you're not getting signal where you want, you can click and drag and move around. So if you're in an environment where you're doing everything overhead, this gives you kind of a, a pretty, you know, pretty decent idea of where you should put all your access points. So beyond that, we have signal to noise ratio, signal to interference, and those really don't come into play nearly as much in the, uh, individual uh, predictive survey situation so what we're going to do is add an extra access point in here so you can see the signal level uh, covers everything pretty well but we're probably going to check out signal and interference here as you can see there's a ton of interference even though this is just predictive um, we have both access points actually sitting at the same uh, frequency you can come inside these guys 5 is disable over to 2 4 so you see we're at 40 megahertz channels channel 1 on this guy check the other one 20 40 megahertz I should say at channel 1 as you can see there's a lot more options we can change the antenna type all that good stuff in here as well so we're gonna take it off of 40 megahertz leave this guy on channel 1 switch this guy over here to 20 megahertz as well and we'll change his channel to 11 and boop and then you can see that our interference virtually goes away because again this is predictive so it's not pulling anything out of the environment it's just showing um, what's currently on the chart so again you can kind of see us running through some of the noise ratio disabling the old one turning turning them back on and off check boxes um, click and drag everything is super easy very straightforward you can see coverage area on this map you can't see it as well but it creates these little lines that shows you kind of how the uh, the AP uh, line meets and then there's your physical rates what it predicts 
um, requirements, you can actually set a set of constraints in there, and if it meets those requirements, it'll actually change colors according to that. So moving into our passive survey, this is where it's actually going to listen with a card. I've got my Orinoco installed. Uh, and you can see all the access points showing up on the left there. And so all I'm doing is uh, in path mode. So you just click, and you, as you walk, when you get to a new point, you're going to turn. You click again, click, 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 and then I will skip ahead. There we go. And as I'm finishing up in the living room there, just a couple more clicks. And what it's doing is it's actively recording signal levels from all those different radios at the different points in time. Right? That's why nothing's checked. By default, it's just listening. So anything that comes uh, comes up, it's actually going to be uh, recording that guy's uh, signal level at the different rates. So what I'll be able to do here is switch to signal level. And again, it's blank because I haven't chosen anything. But here's my router. or router board. Boom. So you can see this is his... Uh, really quick uh, signal readings at all the different areas and kind of how they overlap. So it does a little bit of predictive. It, it does kind of a radius around that it's going to assume <clears throat> by, but uh, you can just use more data points to get a more accurate representation. You can also switch it to click mode so that every time you walk, it doesn't record until you actually click in a, in a point. And I'm just doing it where um, the, the path tool, where you click and then it records as you move and then click and so it kind of predicts um, that signal level over the, the course that you've walked. So you can see here that I'm cranking on some additional access points and it tries to guess where they're actually placed based on their signal when I was walking around. You can click and drag these and move them around if you want but for now I'm just leaving them where they lie and then we'll go over to signal and noise to see how much separation we actually have. We've got decent separation as far as our signal level goes. Hmm. Hmm. Should be moving back up to the top in a second. Signal to interference. As you can see, we've got a fair amount of interference when you look at all the access points in the neighborhood. Because again, in 2.4, you've only got three non-overlapping channels. Um, some of these other guys, I believe, are running at 40 megahertz, although I think most of them are 20 megahertz. But still, at 20 megahertz, you only have three non-overlapping, so with this many access points, it can kind of become a problem. Again, there's where you AP coverage, you can actually see little circles around that one little one down there. Number of access points, that's how many access points you get coverage with in specific areas. And then here's predicted physical rates. Again, so you still have all those options that you can see based on of all these different access points. So in a normal situation, whenever you were checking your interference level, signal interference, you can actually go back and uh, adjust channel utilization uh, different areas. Um, for me, in this environment, I have enough separation that I'm actually running 40 megahertz channels, and I'm still doing okay. To just have the, the the power pumped up enough to where it doesn't really bother me too much. As you can see, what it kind of looks like as we remove some of the other devices. Again, it gives you a lot of uh, control. Here in a second, we're going to switch over to uh, show you the signal level uh, for my existing router and then what the predictive site survey thought it was going to look like. So the signal level and that's the actual. Here's the predictive. So when you really look at the pattern of radio, it actually did a fairly accurate job of, of guessing what it's going to look like. All right, so it'll go back and forth for a second. But still, it gives you a good idea of the software. It's kind of its quick capabilities. There's still a lot more uh, that you can do with it. And uh, I challenge you to give it a go and see what you think.